Good evening, everybody. Good evening, man of God. We salute you, sir. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> oh, Father, you were there for me. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. see you on my live program before. God bless you, sir. Let's pray for a few minutes for us to join with kickstart today. Thank you, Jesus. You were there for me in times of fear. You were there for me. Beef for Bola was so today. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In times of trouble, you're there for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yahweh. Good to know. Oh, thank you, Father. We give you praise. We exalt you for always being there for us. Always, always being there for us. Thank you, Jesus. This song, we just had, um, this lady sang it under um, literal raising ministration. It was part, right? Yahweh, Yahweh, you're there for me. And in every situation, every season, you're there for me. Powerful. Thank you, Jesus. In times of trouble, you are there for me. In every season, you are there for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, let me put this off and let's see how much we can go with it now. 40 50 minutes. Praise God. I believe that this is going to be a blessing to you. Praise God. I want to again welcome you. Let me get myself ready. I want to again welcome you tonight. Believing God for a good, intense, and uh, awesome discussion. Yeah, you ready? So, how we do today? Praise God. Okay, I, mean, I keep missing this, your new IG name. <laughs> Thanks for joining everybody. And uh, God bless you in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you the way we are. We're so grateful to you for mighty, great, and awesome things you're doing in our lives. Thank you for this kind of a week. To some, it would have been a good one. To others, it could have been a stressful one. But we're just grateful 
for you just being on our side and strengthening and upholding us. Be lifted up and be magnified forever in the name of Jesus. We ask, O oh God, tonight that you will just strengthen everyone's uh, strengthen my heart, Apostle God, to make a reasonable discussion out of this meeting in a way that will be mutually blessed. Heal, deliver, save, strengthen. And uh, the subject matter, let it all go in part, people, you know, in a mighty way and in such a way that glorifies your name. Thank you, precious Father. We give you praise and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. So, again, thank you for coming. This is the um, like an outreach arm of his influence church what we do here is that we will come out to bring in a discussion in different dimensions that we believe definitely um, is going to strengthen and uphold somebody's life and um, especially when it comes to any aspect of Christianity those that we seldom discuss in details on the pulpit so um, the last this is the third week now part three hey Sunday I shall go bless you uh, so God bless you, sir. We will be discussing for the past three weeks, this is the third week now, on this um, Japa mindset or what we call relocating uh, um, life in the diaspora. We, we talk about the introduction, then we went ahead and dealt with um, building altars in the diaspora. Um, today is part three, which is also still talking about building altar in the diaspora, just that I prefer to just call it relocating with a saint mentality. Somebody type that for me. Uh, God bless you, Edda. Relocating with a saint mentality. Relocating with a saint mentality. <laughs> and I love that word a lot, relocating with a saint mentality. So what I want to do tonight is to lay foundation again, Pastor Dollar, you're welcome, sir. Lay foundation again and be able to um, finish up some of the authors that we didn't discuss in details uh, last week, Thursday. But I want to do me a favor. Um, I listed about four or five authors, specific areas of life that we need to be intentional about when we move to the diaspora. And uh, or when we even relocate of any kind, because you can relocate from one town to another, and it can be a different body mentality, even from one house to another. The entire board game, entire experience. So, um, what are the major things that you got blessed? What are the major um, authors that we say we need to be intentional about, to be concerned about, to know that these are influential uh, uh, influences of our lives, see of the location we find ourselves, especially now, you know, moving from one culture to another, from one atmosphere, from one weather to another. This trends, you know, and it's very important. So, let me start again. I, tonight, just bear with me. I might need to use a lot of scriptures. <laughs> I might need to read scripture or quote scriptures for you because I really just want to make sure that we have biblical conviction on some of these things we, we're talking about. In the first edition, okay, thank you, Bola. So, what are the, oh, we, we've discussed immigration. Oh, we discussed finances. Then, uh, which other one did we discuss? Somebody help us, okay. Uh, with the immigration family calling finances. Okay, we even did four out of five. Wow, that's that's good. That's good. <laughs> it makes my job easier. So I will advise you that what we I want to build on tonight is based on what we've been dealing with the past two weeks. So if you cannot go on my IGTV or on Instagram to listen to the previous two, please just go on my YouTube depot. Apparently, you're going to see both of them there. It really helped. Uh, Okay, so the initial discussion that we had on this subject matter in two sentences is the fact that we should avoid this um, popular saying, and I know it's becoming an aggressive discussion even far back in Africa right now, and the painful thing is even from poopy sometimes, you know, of uh, having this mindset that once you relocate, you are not in the will of God. Once you relocate, you are vulnerable to demonic attack. Once you relocate, uh, you, uh, it can cut short your destiny. It depends on the record you're really, you know, listening to. It depends on the record you are, <laughs> you, you, are, you are assimilating. The truth of the matter is that relocating is biblical. So that's one of major biblical. I, I gave about seven instances in the Bible of people relocating and God, and even the father of faith, Abraham, was relocated because God told him, you've got to leave. And if he didn't leave, he wouldn't have fulfilled his destiny. All right? Then 
we said it's important not just for you to live, how you live is equally important. Equally important. Living is important if you are led, but after you are led, how you live and where you live for is equally important. And now, when I'm talking about life in the diaspora, please know that I'm talking about moving from African world to the Western world, which is basically probably uh, for, for environment, England and Europe, then Canada, Australia, then um, USA. Those are the four basic. You know, so some of the things we've been discussing at least can fit in into those um, society and environment. And definitely, there are people watching or following us for the past, uh, you know, edition on this subject matter. Now, last week we now said that there are some major authors that we need to pay attention to, and um, we list some of those authors, starting with immigration then calling. Those two, immigration and calling, we really went deep into it, so I might not go further into that, but I need you to please pay attention <laughs> to know that if you are sent, if you are relocating, there is always an agenda in the mind of God. You might have a bit, probably school, children's school, new environment, more opportunity, improvement of your skills, you know, whatever it is it might be, but it's important for you to recognize the fact that beyond what you desire or what we do in your life, God wants to do a lot through your life. That's the reason for relocating. And that's why your calling is very important. You know, somebody put a write up on the pastor, and I, 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 I seldom say this publicly, but sometimes you just have to say some of these things. He said, Oh, I've seen cases of many people traveling out and they shut down their destiny and their life went down. The truth of the matter is that what parameter do you use to appraise a man? when he has relocated because it is possible for you to relocate into some so-called unpopular experiences yet you are seeing the will of god this is the, this this is the portrait this is this is the idea i'm giving to you if you have a missionary mentality or a saint mentality just remind remember Pahetan that left um my kingdom to elisha all through his life in Nigeria, he never organized a meeting where you have 500 or 1,000 people. In fact, the definition of his ministry went down. He wasn't doing so-called a church setting. He was just doing discipleship, in which you cannot even naturally quantify his results. But today, you cannot mention any form of revival in Nigeria without tracing it back to that man. So if somebody leaves now, Africa, like having the same set mentality, like piety and move to any country in, in Europe, probably to Finland, whereby we have less than 3 million, even to probably Hungary, where we're about 4 million. You know? and, and it's there that he does not even have the opportunity to even gather 50 or 100 people you know, all his life as a pastor. Does that, say, that definitely mean that it's not in the will of God? <laughs> you no, know, we can't use that to judge. We have to make sure that when we are praising our lives, we have to do it both in qualitative terms and quantitative terms. I'm not saying we will not have result, and definitely God will always show his mercy, but we need to be sensitive the way we keep people's spirit just because they are trying to respond to something in their mind that probably is not a popularly acceptable ideology, okay? And let me quickly say this, I didn't jackpot or so-called, or I didn't, uh, 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 <laughs> we left when it was somehow most difficult to leave. So we, we, we know it's important for you to respond, you know, to this instruction when God gives to you. So relocating with the same mentality. In one word, what is the saint mentality? Somebody may type this. Saint mentality is when you're operating with boldness, operating in boldness without compromise. <laughs> boldness without compromise. You know this is what God wants you to do and you're not going to compromise anything for it. Boldness without compromise. The beauty of being bold is that irrespective of location, you can still push out your destiny and fulfill the curse of God upon your life. You can be rich in your homeland, be rich in a foreign land. You can be fruitful in your homeland, fruitful in your foreign land, not, re not allowing any circumstance to reduce the potency of a vision. That's boldness. But on the other side, compromise is you making sure that the environment you are in now does not have any way of influencing your passion, your body, and your integrity before God. So somebody like Abraham will tell you that, look, 
I am in this strange land. God brought me here. He has planted me here. He has even promised me the land. But he said to his servant, make sure you do not compromise my boldness or my faith. Because one of the ways you can do it is to allow my son to get married to somebody in the land. Form a wrong relationship. Wrong alliances. So a set mentality is operating in boldness without compromise. Thank you, Bola. Operating in boldness without compromise and i'm praying in the name of jesus right that god will give you the tenacity and ability to stand tall to stand stable to stand focused irrespective of the challenges one of the challenges we face is that there's a lot of cultural preferences there's a lot of institutional racism in the in the diaspora but we are both believing we can still be an ashiva without necessarily compromising does that make sense to you Okay, let me read Jeremiah chapter 29 to you. Jeremiah 29 verse 4. I think I need to, uh, I need to quickly quote that. Jeremiah 20, 29 verse 4. It says, this is what the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, says to the exile, we shall carry the way. So in this case, God specifically said to the children of Israel, he said, we we'll prophesy to them. Jeremiah is that you guys are going to relocate for 70 years. And they got, they, everybody was mad. They thought it was a bad prophet. And every prophet that was saying they won't leave, they won't leave, they are counted to be a good prophet. But God said to them, He said, You will, you will, you will. He said, I'm the one that will take you out. And there are many people right now that God is frustrating out of Nigeria. It's not a dream, it's not a plan, it's not a desire. But God is just interrupting their life. While He's interrupting their life, He's creating an opportunity for them to go out. But He didn't know it was a plan of God for their lives. And only for them to get to that new location and the spirit will ever come down in that country. And God said, that's the reason why I brought you here. Because some of us, God can trust us in advance with his plan. But some of us, God has to corner us, you know, <laughs> and put a bait to draw us to that location. But whatever the case is, you must make sure you have a saint mentality, boldness without compromise. Are you still with me? So he said to them in Jeremiah 29 verse 5, he said, when you get to that spring, let's say, build houses and settle down. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, everyone, God will cause you to settle down fast. To settle down simply means you belong. You will settle down. I'm telling you, <laughs> when you're a visitor, sometimes in this, in some of this country, you just book an hotel, that's fine. But it's when you're not coming and you, you want to live in here, then you discover that able to open a bank account is an headache. But God gave a word. He said, when you get there, build houses and settle down. And settle down. Sometimes you might not be able to settle down until you are across that bridge of immigration. Hallelujah. Because once you have the passport, at least your prayer, even, your prayer point even reduces some dimensions. I pray in the name of Jesus that you will settle down fast. So yes, that's it. You will settle down fast. He said, build houses and settle down. He said, plant gardens and heed their produce. In other words, God is saying that when you relocate, one of the major challenges you should not have, one of the major mentality you should not have as a saint person is that when you're relocating, do not stop complaining. Yet you are not living. I've, I've seen kind of number of blacks, they come into the environment, they even do all manners of things for them to just probably get people whatever or do anything or make money. But everything in their minds, I'm going back to my country. I just came here to make money to go back to my country. No, 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 no. That's not the cancer of God. The cancer of God for you is that when you come here, you settle down. You settle down. You settle down. Your mind must be in that country for that country to be profitable to you. It took me time to understand that for <laughs> for me to enjoy that kingdom reasonably, my mind has to settle down. My mind, you can't be saying, oh, I prefer Canada, I prefer this, and you're in one country. I'm telling you, it's not going to work for you. Your mind is going to settle down. Pray in the name of Jesus that God will give you a settled mind in that place that is leading you to. In Jesus' name, stop complaining, yet you're not living. You know, a lot of people are saying Nigeria is down, is this, 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 but they will not leave the country. <laughs> Praise God. Oh, UK is this, the houses are small, it's struggle to make. You just make, but you will not leave. <laughs> I'm telling you, it doesn't help you. You've got to allow your mind to settle. I need to move faster now. Verse 6 says, take, I'm reading from Jeremiah 29, if you're just joining us. Verse 6 says, take wives and have sons and daughters. Take your wives, take wives for your sons and give your daughters, you know, in marriage. In other words, develop, expand, increase your family possible, um, um, potential. So, hallelujah. He said, when you not get, they say, multiply there and do not decrease. Is another prophetic word I'm releasing into the atmosphere. Say, multiply there, but do not decrease. 
multiply there, but do not decrease. I believe that when God causes us to move locations, He can help us. You must have this mindset that moving to another country will not shut down your destiny. And if you under the sound of my voice and you're just having a feeling that you're not moving at the pace you expect to move, it's not a sign of probably relocation. You have to set your mind. <laughs> you have to set your mind because relocating is more or less like starting all over again. Yes, like starting in some reasonable level. Starting all over again. My, are, you, are you with me? Start all over again. But even when that happens, you have to make sure that you don't shut down your destiny. It's too early for you to conclude your life. You spend one or two years in a country and you are complaining, I've not achieved that, I've not achieved that, I've not achieved that. If you are in Nigeria, will you have even achieved it? <laughs> Praise God, will you have even achieved it? Oh, in yeah, three years or five years in this country, I should have my own mortgage, have my own house. You have spent 35 years in Nigeria, you never build a house. Why are you complaining? <laughs> Why are you complaining? Why are you complaining? Don't, 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 don't. It's too early for you to just judge yourself. And I've told you, those that are watching you from distance and people that thought that when you get to a diaspora, there's money on the truth somewhere where you pick your whatever, probably it's your fault. Because you have to let people know that in Nigeria, they pray for everything, but in diaspora, we pay for everything. We, everything is paid for. The father is working, is a proof that it is paid for. It is paid for. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So verse 7 now, Jeremiah 29 says, seek the prosperity of that city. That's the fourth point. The Number one point is that when you relocate as a saint mindset, you must build us and settle down. You've got to settle down. If your mind is not settle down, if you are thinking every day you want to go back to your country, you, want to, you will not do anything. Number two is that you must multiply there. Do not decrease. Set your mind, set your vision to say, location does not change the faithfulness of, oh my God, I love what just came out of my spirit. Relocation does not reduce the faithfulness of God over my life. Relocation does not reduce the faithfulness of God over my life. So set your mind in that way. Set your mind in that way. The number three is that seek the prosperity of the city. If you are not focused, if you are not interested in what God is doing in that location, in that city, in that country you are in, you don't have a sentimentality. No, 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 no. You are concerned about the benefit more <laughs> than, 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 than the investment you can pull there. It says, see the prosperity of the city to which I have sent you as Ezra. Pray to the Lord on his behalf. You see what I'm saying? Governmental prayers. Learn to talk to God. Learn to talk to God. You know, about the environment you're in. Hallelujah. For if it prospers, you will prosper too. So relocation is not a hit and run project. You must be concerned. <laughs> must be concerned. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me tell you something that was shocking when I saw this scripture. Mm. One of the things that was shocking. Over 3 million people left Egypt to the promised land. We do not have a, I can't get a statistic of how many people that were living in Israel as at the time Jeremiah was giving prophetic word that you are going to move to Babylon. But this is the prophetic word that was given. And when Nebuchadnezzar went to Babylon and pulled the guys out, you know, to Babylon, there were many. Out of the many, it shows a group of people also. And he said to them, hey guys, <laughs> want to use you. With this heavy prophetic word we just read right now, it's only five, four people that responded to this. That's what is even hitting me there. <laughs> it's, only, it's only Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that understood the potency of this prophetic word. All the other people just became a normal people. I hate us being normal in Spring Land. I hate it. I hate I just dislike it. Hallelujah. I just dislike it. You, you cannot. Oh my goodness. You, you, you came in there to have value. You came in there to be an addition. Not to join them. Not to behave like them. Not to think like them. You have the ability to retain your mindset. At what's up to it. What is beneficial in the new environment. You can't just come in into Babylon and just drop. Oh, come on. Somebody shout, I'm a Dane in my location. I am a Mishra and Misha can I beg me in my location. I have that Saint Mark mentality. I am bold. I am not compromising. I am bold. I am not compromising. I am bold. I am not compromising. As you begin to set into this new environment and you begin to see circumstances begin to narrow, even your ability to achieve things begin to narrow your alternatives and opportunity, you need to say to yourself, 
that I am not just here because I send myself. I have a set mentality. I've got boldness. I can achieve my goal. I can fulfill my destiny without compromising. As you listen to me, I can be in this place, respond to the will of God, wish God to do what is in his plan for that land and I can see a ship the best. Listen to me, nothing will drive. Let me say it again, what came to my spirit a few minutes ago. Relocation does not reduce the faithfulness of God. If God is faithful, it's a global mentality. Anyway you are, goodness of God is universal in nature. Hallelujah. Only Daniel, Shadrach, and, Mish, and Abednego responded to this every prophetic word. That's when, when God said to them, you can go back to your promised land. Many of them didn't go because they just, they just, they just mixed with the multitude and just fade away. Praise God. So, let's get to the meat of the discussion. Are you with me? Thank you, Tokwe. I am a Danny in my location. Yeah, I am a Danny in my location. It's costly. <laughs> but if you have a sent mentality, you've got to be relevant. I want you to get to a level where when you're doing your thing, you're working, you're, you're going to show you're doing everything. When anybody from different cultures sees you, one of the first things they should ask you is that which country did you originally came from? And I'm telling you, it's either it has to their perspective or you adjust it. Because I see people that see the way I behave and they said, which country are you from? They said, oh, I said I'm from Nigeria. Oh, it's, uh, oh I, I, you're from Nigeria? It's different. You know, your, your kind is different. I've, I've got a lot of Nigerian friends. Somebody told saw me the way I was treating ladies, you know, you know, uh, uh, in a place, and she said, How many of he, he has the God to come and meet me? He said, How many of them are your girlfriends? And I said, I don't do women. So I'm married, I've been with one woman for 15 years, and I've known her for 20 years, and I, 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 there's no other woman except that. He said, No, don't lie to me. I've got many Nigerian friends. Do you know what that means to me? That means to me that all the Nigerian friends this guy has been having, <laughs> they, they, they might have boldness, but they'll be compromising. You've got to change the narrative. You pick a job. Hallelujah. They might not they must not see laziness in you because probably the last guy they they, they sat <laughs> was very lazy. I'm a Danny. I'm a Danny in my location. I'm a Danny in my location. Hallelujah. Carlos Eveleco Prostapala. I release the spirit that adjusts our mentality into the cancer of God, even in every location God has placed us by the power of the Holy Ghost right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Now let's get again to the meat of the discussion. What are the pillars? I said in diaspora is altar versus altar. I told you last week about the story of uh, uh, one of my you know, greatest mentor, my greatest mentor in, in apostolic ministry, Bishop Tudor Bismarck, and some of the experiences he sees how he combats and fights demonic powers as he moves from nation to nations. And uh, uh, and I said to you that when you come visiting, there's only one altar that the diaspora is looking for, and that's your income. Have you got money? Even when you are applying, you will know. They put it there. Is, have you got money? Is this your money? Are you ready to spend it? And when you finish spending it, will you go back to your country? Fine. <laughs> and they tell you, if you, do, if you don't, don't, don't stay extra. Fine. But when you're coming to be a resident, you must understand that there are more. Because all the altars in the countries, actually the altars that have been polluted, adulterated, they're going to be fighting the altar you brought in. So if you bring in the author of, you know, sanity, morality, the, the author of immorality is waiting for you in the new location. Are you with me? So now, let me give you a quick study because now we, we, we've dealt extensively with immigration. We've dealt, uh, dealt extensively with um, calling. Please go and listen to that. It's on my YouTube. Let me just buttress a point on family because family author is one of the major authors in the diaspora. The reason why, is diff why this is important is because or family perspective to what we call definition we give to family where we're coming from in african the african environment is still a little bit moral and biblical but it's different in the diaspora if you have time after this broadcast go to google and search, search what is the definition of parent what's the definition of family it will shock you that it's not a combination of father my husband wife and children now in the diaspora, the word partner has successfully replaced the word spouse. <laughs> Hallelujah. But they are two different things. So collaboration work as, as, as easy as possible. And you don't even have the right to condemn because the law supports stuff like that. But when you're a Christian, when you come in, you've got to be bold without compromising because that altar is going to hit you. I'm trying to tell you that if you're struggling maritally, 
you fight regularly where you're coming from. When you come to this environment, if you don't build altar maritally, make an intentional decision to keep your marriage. I'm telling you, God, faith. Some of us, where we're coming from, you know, before you see your mokupa, your head is already, you can't zip up, you can't do this. In that environment that looks a little bit, you know what I mean by mokupa, definitely, you know. <laughs> you know, you know, opposite says you, you can't zip up, you can't handle your emotions. I'm telling you, over there, you, you, you pay for it. To go into immorality here, they can pay you for you to do it. The environment differs. The environment differs. The, the, <laughs> one of <laughs> one of our church members that just relocated. His son is a teenager. He was just you know, taking the bus from school to from school home, and uh, inside the bus, a young lady just approached him and said, "Can we be friends?" They've not met before. They've not done anything before. He just approached him, a thirteen-year-old boy, and said, "Can we be friends?" And that's how many people he lured into immorality, lured into drug abuse, lured into smoking, and all of stuff like that. Because that's the, how the environment is. Okay, I'm not going deep into what brought the environment to that level but the truth of the matter is that there is altar family altar hallelujah and i don't know why i'm saying this you've got to be very intentional careful about immorality in this friendly land because it's so it's just there immorality is just there in genesis chapter 16 let me give you a case story because this is key in genesis chapter 16 after abraham received the promise that the womb that will be baby is coming sarah was emotionally frustrated and the only thing Sarah could do in Genesis 16 is to hand over her guy to Abraham. He gave it, he's there. He said, he gave it, he gave it to Abraham. He said, because I couldn't have children, come on, take this, you know, so that I can build a family. In verse 3 specifically, the Bible says, and Sarah, Sarah's Abraham's wife took Agar and made the Egyptian and gave him to Abraham. After they have spent 10 years in the land of Kena. You know what that simply said to me? That simply said to me that number one, Agar is not, it was not a Jew. Agar was not a Jew. It was a spiritual setup. When they were moving from location to location, they were building relationship, buying and selling. That's how they got Agar into the, into the fold. And there are many people. In fact, the fact that you could see a statistic that Abraham has about over 300 people that were born into his house, servants that were born into his house. So you know that there are quite a number of ladies there. But it's just one. There is an Egyptian. It's just one. There's an Egyptian. That the, and Abraham did not question it. In other words, the guy too probably is having some sense of familiarity. That's why any kind of spiritual, any kind of natural closeness that is not defined is dangerous. You've got to define every relationship you are in, including opposite sex. In fact, these days, you've got to define every relationship you are in, including that of so-called pastors and spiritual leaders. I'm sorry I have to say that because you've got to be careful. You don't even know who is telling the truth any longer. And there's no level of scriptural, no Bible, um, no uh, approval you can give to it that allows any form of immorality. We've got to be careful, guys. We've got to be careful, ladies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our guy was not a Jew, so we've got to be careful. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you know, winter is coming now. We're close to it. We're, far, we're already in the in UK. So instead of you just being that, you better bring your family together and make sure everybody's together. <laughs> Everybody is together. You need it. You need the warm. You need close relationship. You need the fine relationship. You need families, not just um, uh, friends with benefits. You know what I mean by that. <laughs> Praise God. Now, what I want to deal with extensively tonight. Are you still with me? If you're with me, say yes. Let me let me pray for a minute. If you're with me, say yes. I want to not deal extensively with your health and your finance in the diaspora. And I tell you some of my experiences. And I hope this is going to bless you. If you're with me, say amen. I just want to be sure you are with me. I'm a Daniel in my location. Thank you, Tokwe. I'm a Daniel in my location. Thank you, Bola. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Yes, give me more yes. Are you still there with me? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good. So, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, let's talk about, before I go into um, let, before, let this family thing, 
While I was praying today, a thought came to me. It said, Wash new, a thought came to me. And this is what it says. It said, Wash new relationship that comes to your life in the diaspora that has potential of controlling your decision so quickly. So quickly. They come with bait. Probably you get into a new environment. They say, Okay, how can we help you? And all of that, which is good. But you have to sharpen your discernment. If any relationship comes into your life with an agenda to control you, you know there's a form of selfishness in this. Probably this is a word for somebody. Be careful. Watch out for new relationships. Somebody cannot come into your house for the first time and is already on your bed. It doesn't work that way. Watch out. Actually, those of us, because some of us, when we relocate, we also ignore or abandon old relationships. Then you begin to say, oh, you don't live in UK. You don't know how it works. Come on, you better stop that. You better stop that. You better stop that. Mm. Value relationships. Value. Mm. I'm telling you, value Actually, relationship that God has placed in your life that, that has benefited you and has you have built for years. Don't just wake up one morning and say, you are you know, breaking the bridge. Please, beware, watch out for new relationships that, that come to your life and has potential of controlling your decisions so quickly. Potential of controlling your decisions so quickly. So quickly. They come with a bait. They've got some money. They can have some help. They can do this. They can do that. But there's an agenda in it. And you can see within the scope of weeks that there's an agenda in this. Be careful. I don't know who I'm talking to, but that's the word of the Lord. So let's talk about health. The, our health in the diaspora is very, very, very sensitive. This is what I want to tell you. That it, you, you guys might not believe, even if you're in Nigeria. I can tell you that it seems as if the diaspora is more stressful than even Africa. Yeah, more stressful. Africa could be physically stressful, but the mental stress in the diaspora, I think, is a bit high. Because, yeah, man, schedules over schedules, the stress of, you know, paying bills, the stress of working, managing with taking children, the stress of not even having people to assist you. Especially when you have small children, you know, the stress is just there. Then, one of the things that even causing the stress is the mental health is because now everybody just focusing on making us mean, you know, we're not intentional again with relationships. We, we're, not, we're not building opportunity for fun. Now I understand when you see a British or a Canadian that they book a holiday on a yearly basis, probably the holiday for 2023, they've already built it now, paid for it. But we, we can't even pay for holiday for next year because we're still struggling. Some of us are still struggling to pay bills. Or some of us, the way we grew up, what is holiday? What is vacation? Even when we go on vacation, we, we are more tired on vacation than resting. Because we don't even understand the importance of retreat and all of that. Okay, so the diaspora can be very stressful, especially mental health. But you need to build an altar over your head. Because if your head goes down, listen to me, I've seen experiences. Oh man, I've seen experiences. Let me share. When I came into the United Kingdom with my family for the first time, that's after probably coming to you, going in and out of UK for quite a bit of time. That day, 11 p.m., we landed in UK after multiples of hours delay. And immigration just took us and took us to an office and it seems as if they're going to send us back to Nigeria. That was when God begins to give us favor. And the lady attended to her said, the reason why they're doing that for us is because we didn't have tuberculosis test. Can you imagine? If I say to somebody that just came to UK, now they will say, oh, really? We didn't do any tuberculosis test. We didn't even know you need to do it. <laughs> you know, we just came into the country by faith. But the lady had favor on us, and the next thing said to her is that, don't worry, I will allow you in. Take this card. When you get to your own house, you know, put your address there and send it back to me. And which is what we did. And I mean, probably one or two weeks later, they just sent me a letter from the, from the hospital asking me to come in and they test me and they say they have tuberculosis. Can you imagine tuberculosis? And I'm saying, what is tuberculosis? That's when I'm even trying to, you know, read off. I've only heard about people like Kenneth again that was almost dead and they said he has tuberculosis. And I'll say, what? what? What the hell is this? <laughs> and, and, and before I knew it, it was not a joke. They wanted to take me to the city to do some scan. Before you knew it, they wanted to open my throat and do all of those things. I'm telling you, I was scared to death because that was the initial, because all over my all my years, I just believe I'm a strong guy, you know, everything. That time, I'm telling you, my faith was tested. My faith was tested that by the time I got to the hospital and said they wanted to shake my throat, before I knew it, they gave me an injection, boom. 
It's as if I'm going to pass out. But my faith was active. And God just, in his mercy, by faith, just, just saved me because of purpose. That's why you need to build an altar. And many people have entered the country the first time they just went for checkup like that. That's the end of their life. Or that's when they started nursing health. Nursing health issue. So you need to be intentional about your health. Especially when you know you are the visitor, when you know when you have capacity, when you know you are a breadwinner, you are important to your family, you, you are a backbone, not just your immediate family, even to your extended family, to the ministry, everything God has called you. You've got, you can't be in diaspora and not live long. That's what I'm saying. You can't be. And all these are our faith, faith, faith that will not allow us to go and do shake up. When, with every money you paid on NH, uh, uh, head subscribe and you won't go to the hospital, bro, you better go. Oh, what about if they see what they don't want to see? You have to build your faith. At least know what is wrong so that you can know what you're fighting. Go and do check up. Every four, when you're 40 years in UK, they send you a letter. You've got to come and do check up. Every letter they send you, please respond to it. Many people that have issues with cancer, some of these sicknesses in their body, is it doesn't come. Some of those sicknesses are not instantaneous. They are not miraculous or sudden event. It's a journey. But because somebody pay, didn't pay attention to it, your body is tired, you won't rest. You won't rest. You won't rest. You have to trust God to help you to use five days of the week to work one day for family and one day for yourself. You've got to understand and respect Sabbath. If you don't, I'm, te I'm telling you some nasty experience. Let me tell you another experience. Three years ago, probably that's uh, 2000, you know, we, we, I just said, everybody, let's go back to school. And myself with ministry, we just starting this prayer. Yeah, that was when we just about to start the Simple Church. Uh, I pick up a part-time job. I'm a family of some children that are small. And at the same time, I was, um, I was schooling full-time. Full-time. And I thought probably I would just go buy these school things like, um, you know, uh, I did on campus many years ago. Boy. <laughs> it's different. It's different. By the time I was entering December of that year, I'm telling you, my body shut down. And I think I'm a big boy because over my life, I just believe I'm a guy that has good air. So I pride in it. I'm a strong guy. I know my body. I broke down. I broke down that to, to stand up from the pulpit was a strong... I said pulpit. Oh, that's the same pastor. <laughs> to stand up from the bed... I can see pain, and, and I think I do, I love to, before I can tell you I'm tired, I just know that probably I'm 80% into it, but I'm telling you, I broke down. I broke down so much that I begin to cry to God for mercy. Lord, what is wrong with me? The way things are going right now, my body that time is as if I'm just about to call emergency number, please come over, come over and help me. At that time, I was not even, I was try, not trying to play game. I couldn't eat, I couldn't do it, I was just tired. I begin to beg God for mercy. Beg God for mercy, beg God for mercy. Then God just came to whisper to me in a dream and he showed me my future. And he said, Don't worry, because sometimes one of the ways by which I'm talking to you about building altar <laughs> is one of the ways by which God delivers you from challenges when you are there is when he does not talk to you about the challenge, but he's talking about to you about the future. That's a sign that you will survive. When when you say, Oh God, I need two thousand pounds. You know, uh, to apply for immigration probably is due anywhere from now. And God, you're you sleepy, woke up, you saw yourself holding a British passport. God is telling you the future from the beginning. So that's one of the ways by which God, you know, communicates his agenda. So I saw that dream, just like probably less than five minutes, you know. And, and I know, oh, wow. God. Then he came to me, he said, he came to me, he said, guy, go to rest, take a lot of water. They gave me a specific instruction. He said, as you enter the next year, 20, that's like, okay, that's 2021 now, you know, is as you enter the next year, go on 60 days fast before your body. I need to be specific with all the instructions so that you won't just say that I saw something never and blew everything away. He said, go on 60 days fast before your, that was December ending, Christmas, then my body is April. He said, go on 60 days fast and I did it. But what I noticed is that when I received that word from the Lord and I received and I accepted it, in the scope of few minutes, I began to feel better. Begin to feel better. Because I knew it's an altar. And let it not be that you are the one that is putting sacrifices on the altar the enemy is building against you. Just because we will not use common sense. That we will not be sensitive to our body. You can't have two children and behaving as if you are a sissy. You, you are not young. The truth is, okay, let me quickly say it. You are no more young as you think you are. You are no more a teenager. Don't don't let anybody deceive you because you are losing weight. You know you are you are still slice size twelve or size, but you are not young. You've got to create time to rest. When you begin to get towards the age of fourteen and above, eighty hours 
per day out of 24 hours of sleep is not is not a compromise sometimes you might even need to have a one hour break and because now we're building having small children growing up they're so distracting that you have to just trust God for wisdom on how to get the children busy so that you can just take care of yourself because if you don't take care of yourself all of them will, will face it are you with me as soon as if that is not enough as soon as if that is not enough um COVID came in too We've not even ended. We're, we're just trying to discover what is COVID. Boom! I had COVID. Before I knew it, my wife, seven days on the bed, seven days on the bed, begging God again, what is the matter? What is the matter? What is the matter? What is this thing? Water. It was then I discovered that this COVID thing, when it came, actually in the diaspora where I am, I don't know about other countries, it looks as if it's the people that have destiny, the devil is just running after You've got to be sensitive to your health. You've got to be sensitive. It's the same thing. Building an altar again hasn't got for mercy. Hasn't got for instruction. Till he comes again. Show me the picture of the future. In fact, this time he showed me how long I'm supposed to live. Then I was so happy. I said, God, thank you for restoring. Then he gives me new weapons and strength and faith and stamina to say sickness is not going to pull me down. And after a few days, I got up. I am praying the name of Jesus. May every sickness in your body dry up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Even if it is your fault, I'm asking for God's mercy to prevail over you. I bring you to that point of mental stability, physical stability. And in the name of Jesus, with abundance of grace and power, to be able to sustain a good head. In the name of the Lord Jesus. You cannot be in your 30s and be having high blood pressure. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, I said no, 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 no. In the name of Jesus Christ, you cannot be on parastamol on a weekly basis. No, no. No, 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 no. I said, no, 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 no. You cannot be visiting GP on every month. No, 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 no. I decree in the name of Jesus Christ of Nigeria that the power that brings illness and strength and stability to body and sustainers, multi, multi, multi vitamins from the spirit realm, release over your body and the consciousness to live an healthy life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are you with me? What is the altar that I build? Exodus 23, 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and water, and I will take sickness from among you. You've got to appreciate that scripture as an equipment for altar building in the diaspora. Are you with me? My secret is so simple. I don't give God a vow. I will give you this. Those are, I vow with my life. Present your life as a uh, uh, as a sacrifice. That's Romans chapter 12. As a living sacrifice. My life is my sacrifice on the altar of God. That God, I will serve you. I am responsible. <laughs> I will serve you. Hallelujah. It's been a very busy week for me this, this time. Though God was faithful to prove himself mighty in some of the things we trusted him for. But I had to see, come and stand before you and talk. And you even know how tired I am talking to you right now. But you know what gives me? The reason I can do this before you is because I understand that if I serve him, he will take sickness away. Are you with me? I am praying in the name of Jesus, right? The kind of investment you will put on the altar that will make God to come over again and again to help you when you need him most. He will give you grace and option to do it in the name of Jesus. I tell you, I believe the word of the Lord that God has the ability to take away sickness. Did you hear me? He can take it. <laughs> Somebody say, take it. It can take it. It can take sickness away from a family. It can take sickness away from a generation. It can take away sickness from a lineage. I don't care what is the record in my gene. The doctor might say, in my lineage, they've got, you know, this one. In my lineage, they, they can even say everybody in Africa potential for tuberculosis. But I come in the name of Jesus, building an altar that proceeds from the throne room of grace and mercy. I say to you, God, we take away sickness from your body. I say, it will take it. It will not heal it. It will not, it will take it. It can, it can move it. It, it can move it. It can, it can empty sickness in your body. Oh my God. Makatola, embracuse, kembro, kota, lada, basha, me gedembra, kasuve, kete, e gabando, suko, prando, si kete, pa, anda, he, je, ke, pro, sakuta, me gedembra, kopa, he, ge, bagada, he, we, take sickness, he, we, he, we, take sickness, oh, my goodness, I feel something good there, eh? we, take away sickness, he, can, take it, we, can, take it, hallelujah, to build an altar, to build an altar, in your health, you need to remember this scripture, Proverbs 18, verse 14. 
He said the spirit of a man will sustain him in the time of sickness. The spirit of man. In other words, there is a minimum strength your spirit needs in order to repel against sickness. Hallelujah. There is a minimum strength your spirit man needs to carry in order to repel a sickness. So when there is something wrong with your body, with your mind, if your spirit man is strong, the speed by which those sicknesses or mental issues can be repaired is faster. Are you with me? That's why you've got to build your spiritual life. And that's what service does. To build your spiritual life strong enough in the diaspora that can repel against sickness. I say it again to you, brothers and sisters. Whether to you or to your children. I mean, living witness. God has been good. Oh, God has been good. When it comes to health, God has been good. The other time I was just thinking, I said, oh, Jesus, right? This is September ending, 2022. As I talk to you right now, we don't even know where our GP is, general practices in UK, because we don't have any reason to even visit or take the children to anyone. It's by the mercy of God. He can take sickness away. He can take sickness away. That, that, that you won't even thinking one day, oh, whether this child will go to school. No, 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 no. And, and it's possible. This was, and we will not, we not credit the devil to it. We will not credit the system to it. For it, we will we, we, we say this is the Lord's doing. And it's because of his faithfulness. Again, he said, I will take sickness away among you. I'm saying to every family under the sound of my voice, God will take sickness sis, away from your family. He will take it. I love that way. Just keep coming. He will take it. He will take it away. He will take it. Hallelujah. He, he will take it. You will not need to manage it. He will take it away. You just wake up one morning and it is no more there. It will expire. Oh, glory to God. I be, oh, my. I believe that for somebody today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. Let me quickly use two minutes, if I can have that, to talk to you about when you talk about health in the diaspora, please be sure your physical health, your mental health is very important at whatever level. Even pastors are having mental issues now. <laughs> you don't need to turn to the so-called what we call mad people in Nigeria before you know. When you begin to discover that you are just so expressive emotionally, you just you get angry easily, you shout easily, you 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 get distracted easily, you can't concentrate, you can't you can't even watch a movie without dozing off or being loaded with the, you know somebody is talking to you, your mind is gone anywhere. When you, there are mental issues you need to quickly check it out that you need dress you need to talk to somebody you know and stuff like that you're easily distracted you're praying you're praying you're, you're tonguing but your mind has gone so far and you're struggling to even pull it back to the place of prayer you open your mouth in the morning you start praying then by the time you discover next you are slept off or you're even thinking and you are stopped praying. all of those things you need to know that you need to keep your mind sane especially in the diaspora so i will ask you please get prayer partners or prayer coverings You've got to make sure you have people around you that you can call once or two times. Please keep me in prayer in this. And reliable, you have to labor to have people like that around you. I'm telling you, it will help you. Number two, you need what, what I call therapeutic partners. Those are people that you can pour your emotionally excess over. Because some of us now, you have not cried in years. The only ghost will not make you cry. No, but the only time you cry is when you feel disappointed or, or, or you know, or it's so-called worship. But, but you need, sometimes you need people that when you talk to, you can express your vulnerability and feeling. And if it will make you to cry, it's fine. Because it will release you, it will relieve you, make you feel better. Don't do champion. Don't do champion. You are reading the book of Psalms. You will see David repeating me. He said, I cry out to the Lord. I do this. And I one thing I know is that when you're in the place of prayer, to a level where you begin to cry and weep and wail, I'm telling you, God will not despise your pain. God will not despise your pain. So you need friends like that in your life. If you can, you can have some. Don't have this mindset. You can have some. This year alone, there are people in my life that it is when, oh my goodness, thank God. For the benefit of good relationships. Thank God. At every level for the benefit of relationships. In the diaspora, because this place is so distracting. For instance, there was a country in UK, in, in Europe, that somebody died and they did not notice until about 17 days. The cops were already, you know, smelling everything. They just know because everybody is on their own. They will, nobody wants to talk to everybody. It, 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 is, it is in the diaspora, the black, we see a black, they won't even know what it means to say hello. Do you know what it means to say hello to somebody in the morning? It helps you, yourself, for you to open your mouth and talk. But you see two black people saying, and they will just be acting as if they're dumb. And I'm just wondering, what level are you showing? Do you mean your country? I, I, I don't know. You need people, you 
can talk to new people at whatever level you hear that you can just cry over and just say oh this is what i'm facing no and they will not underestimate they will not reduce you it's your responsibility to get people like that sometimes you might even call someone and say this is the kind of relationship i want us to to have that this relationship anytime i'm passing through somebody something and i knew i can talk to can i call you please you agree can i trust you that you will keep my secret can i trust you that you will not use it against me you agree are you proud about it you agree you can even sign a covenant you know with that and build relationship like that you need it you need prayer covering you need therapeutic partners then you need gist partners some of you don't laugh I was watching a movie and somebody make an analysis that was so encouraging. He said, he said when they are in a, in a terrain of these um, mental issues, you know, stress, he said, there's a benefit when you shout loud. He said, oh, you know, and shout, it, it, it gives you a relief. In fact, I felt it. <laughs> I felt it. Like it. You just need somebody who can just shoot, you know, just laugh, talk, and play, and jump, and laugh, you know, about. You can't be serious 24 hours a day. What's the problem? You need, you need to keep your mind. Anyway, I'm not a mental health nurse. Probably my wife will do a better job with that. I just want to quickly add that. Actually, we are too serious in the diaspora. You've got to, you know, to cool off, relax. And even when pastor is laughing, you just think as if uh, we're not serious. And I'm just wondering. We are human being too. Hallelujah. When we're saying the Lord said, the Lord said, you know, you feel that hmm, he's the man of God. Then when he's laughing, actually when people, you think he's not, hey, 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 hey. Hey, you need a gist partner. I have gist partner. I have two or three of them. That any time we talk, it's minimum of one hour. We talk about everybody and every not everybody really every all manners of things. You just talk, you know. In fact, one of the, you know, this is not a gist partner. Probably is a gist daughter. You no, know, you know. Sometimes even some of this my relationship and prodigies. When I call you, I'm just bamboozling. You just talking to you, making you laugh. You think probably I'm not a serious person. It's intentional. I'm just trying to pull you so that you can just you know. Relax and cool off and you know uh, and refresh yourself, you know. And I, I most of most, most appreciated it. And if you want me to just be calling you and say, oh, "Hello, sister in the Lord, God bless you," I just have to check on you today. The Lord be with you and guide you. And this week it is well with you in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I can do that too. But you can't be close to me, really. <laughs> you can't be close because it's good to be alive. Okay, praise God. As I conclude today, wow. Give me 10, 15 minutes. Author of finance. Yeah, just daughter. <laughs> you know, daughters. I have them. At least there, there are few, but I think I, I have them. I have them. And we, we're, we're enjoying our relationships. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about, um, as I conclude today, about finance author. Definitely. Most people that relocated, they relocated. They relocated because of this thing called money. Yeah, we more pounds, more dollars. That's uh, most people. Most people, most people, and one of the major thing that can that you can struggle with, you know, <laughs> God bless you, Molai. <laughs> I saw the gift anyway, Molai. God bless you. You know, uh, one of the one, one of the worst thing that can happen is for you to be, and which is one of the reasons people are scared about travel relocating, is for you to be rich in your homeland, then you get to foreign land, you're broke. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, <laughs> for you to come in with thousands of pounds, and after few months everything is gone some have even sold their land sold their houses and you come into a new country and everything is gone so you've got to build an altar of finance in the diaspora <laughs> i just hope i can deal with this in the next 10 minutes so that i can release you altar of finance is critical everybody needs money and as i told you earlier in this environment you've got to pay bills you can you go to pay bills one of the things that even shocked me in the diaspora the level we I've, I've had cases of not just one, not just my, definitely more than two. The United Kingdom of pastors that have been declared bankrupt. You know what it means to be declared bankrupt? In Nigeria, that doesn't make anything. If you're a bank, if you have declared bankrupt in UK, you can't even engage in any transaction. You can't. You can't engage in any transaction. Pastors, because of the prayer. That's the way we started the Simply Church. Church. I was expecting that God, you're going to call sons and daughters, people, you know, but, but we live in a world today that people want it big before they join it. You know, some, that's what they do. But when I, but when I saw some things, actually in the ministry I saw it before, and how that if, even though I studied accounting, I don't even need that. I, I, I know that if you are not wise financially, you will break your heart in the diaspora. Number one, 
Everybody starts small, and then you grow big. You you can't come in, you can't come into UK, you know, because you are driving a Range Rover in Africa. You say you want to drive Range Rover immediately in UK. Even the cost of insurance alone can pay for mortgage. So you have to use your sense. Say let's go. Or you just decide to push buggy for a while before you can get to that level because there are some things you will not be able to achieve in the diaspora or you are spending a little time and that's why you can't keep comparing your life in the diaspora with while you're living in Africa. Come on, you're just here to start all over again. So you have to grow it again. You grow your credit, you grow your ability, you grow your profession, you grow everything. You grow everything. There are some things you can never have until you have spent three to five years in the environment. So you can't just be in rush. All this operation, Lord, ask me to my life. That, that prayer point is relative. And you are very careful. And don't put yourself under prayer. Are you with me? In Africa, you can afford to have a four-bedroom house and it's only a father and mother and one daughter. And you left the other two rooms to one family friend that will, or, or relative that will not come except once in a year. But what, what are you doing with four-bedroom house in the United Kingdom? <laughs> come on. Come on, if you don't have a large family, you've got to be careful. This thing is not, it's not a show business. Your life is not a show business. You have to just trust God to reset our way of thinking. Yeah? In fact, somebody <laughs> says, always say, what God cannot do does not exist. It's relative. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Let me read a case study for you, and this is going to be powerful. Please go and meditate over it later. I want to read about the prodigal son. Luke chapter 15, verse 13 to 16. Luke 15, 13 to 16. Luke 15, 13 to 16. If you're a pastor, you're a church leader, you know, in any form, especially in the dance world, you have to be very careful about the church finances. Extremely careful. Extremely careful about the church finances. Luke chapter 15, let's rush this now, verses 13 through to 16. The background of the story is that the prodigal son went to go and meet his father and said, give me what belongs to me, and the father gave it to him. So, the worth of his destiny, he has it. The Bible says, not after many days, the younger son gathered all he had, all, and he took a journey to a far country. That's relocating. <laughs> and there he wasted his substance in a riotous living, because he went to the other country to go and show Actually, in an environment whereby do you do you think anybody's looking at you in the diaspora? In the winter, no matter how much clothes you wear, you're gonna put a single jacket on top of it. You think somebody is washing you or seeing the no cost of trainers that you bought? Come on. Nike is Nike, Adidas is Adidas. And if it has no name or no brand, you better wear it. You think somebody is less busy that everything is doing, everybody's working, they're looking at what you're wearing. Come on. And if you belong to an African church whereby that's what you do, you have to create a culture. It doesn't work like that here. Don't, don't, don't spend the money. You don't have to buy what you don't need to impress people who, who will never like you. That's a long time, this, you know, <laughs> quote that I'm just giving to you. So the guy took everything he gathered, went to a fast country, and he wasted it. I'm advising you, if you have investment, you have sold. Money you have, you know, you, 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 you have in Africa before you relocate on, you have it. You, this is not a place where you come and waste it. No, don't waste it. Don't waste it. Because people are so good to when anybody can enjoy your money, you, they, they, you, you can pay for it. You know, I remember when I was coming to UK, I didn't even know. I did, nobody advised me. I don't know even when you want to take rent. You want to do, I don't know anything. I just went in the school of faith. When I got to UK, that was when I knew that when you want to rent a house, you need to pay deposit. But thank God I sold my car and I brought in the money. And that money was what I was using as deposits as a move out to us. You've got to understand that when you bring the totality of your investment into a new country it must not be wasted no wasted if it's not enough it's one thing but if you have excess oh, there's a let me tell you there's a spirit that comes on you when you have money you kid that you feel like spending in case you don't know i tell you is there your taste will change i'm telling you your taste will change your taste will change Mm. The day when I remember the year we got a British passport, we got a, I just said to myself, I said, because we have a British passport, we are changing this TV to 18 inches, you know, just like that. Sorry, I have to share that, just, just like that, because you just have one to have it, just feeling that I'm there. But you have to be very careful so that you don't do it on a loan in which you will not be sweating to pay. And the only thing you gain is your washing. <laughs> Wisdom is enough for the wise. Took his joint for a fast one and wasted it there. Escape mentality. It took it. If you have an escape mentality, you will always struggle with your finances. 
Hallelujah. What I mean by escape mentality is that some of us, the way we left Africa is as if we're not coming back. I was still telling somebody last week, I said, as we're leaving Nigeria, please tell your church leader, tell the relation that important in your life that you relocated. Because some will just relocate, you won't resign, you won't tell anybody, you will just run away like that, you just escape. You don't care. You just, you just cut off those relations that have helped you to a level whereby you have the ability to relocate. Even the people you collected and loaned or whatever. I've seen people now, what they do is that before they relocate, now they go and take loan from Nigerian banks. You know, as they, and as soon as they collect the loan, they move it to another account, they resign, and boom, they are gone. This, this, you cannot, you, you can't do that and not pay those money and come into the diaspora and you expect the anointing of God to rest upon you. How does it work? Escape mentality. Don't, don't leave Nigeria or Africa and see if it's not a place to go back to. No, no, it's not. It's not. That's what this guy did. He left. He, put, he got everything he has. There are some investment that is only profitable in Africa, not in the United Kingdom. There's some level of freedom you will never have in business except in Africa. I'm telling you, in Africa. A <laughs> bishop, a pastor, a man I respect so much, opened an account in the United Kingdom and they just transferred 2,000 pounds into it. In the United Kingdom, 2,000 pounds into it. You know what the bank did? They called them and they closed that account. They, they was not even asking them where did they get the money from. They closed the account. That is how sensitive things can be in the United Kingdom. And they won't ask no questions. Because here, you don't become a, you don't become rich suddenly. You grow your income. From the day you're handing 3,000 to uh, 100 pounds, the day you turn to 1,000, you grow your income in the diaspora. They're watching you. You don't know. They're analyzing. When, when, one, when, when your income is 2,000, 3,000 on, 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 on money base and one day 50,000 hit your account, it will send a lot. Everybody will see it and they will start knocking your door, calling you. You bring in a cash of 3,000, 5,000 in your hand into the bank. We just say, wait, there, let's, before we attend to you, before you know it, a policeman is already there asking you where to get the money from. But you can wake up in Nigeria one day and somebody transfer three million to your account and, and even the account officer will be calling you. Can we come and see you in the office? You know, <laughs> it's a fair thing. Some investment, some opportunity financially. That's why I'm, I'm saying this to you so that you don't escape and forget the country from where you come from. When they left Babylon, when they left for Babylon, 70 years they went back. Even when Abraham left his father and mother, God said, I'm bring you, I gave them a land, took them out of this and bring you back to the land. Don't forget your home country. That's a very sensitive word to somebody. Hallelujah. And verse 14, Luke chapter 15, he said, When he has spent all, he arose, there arose a man family. You must learn how to deal with farming in straight line. I know that one is coming in the United Kingdom now. With this uh, Russia thing, gas, electricity. Hallelujah. Pounds has gone low now, radically, you know, to, 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 to dollars after how many years? Because of the environment. So there could be, you might, some of us that are doing, doing, you know, you escape mentality now, you might just escape into farming. <laughs> you just escape, escape into a country where there is farming. And farming is waiting for you. I can't imagine a family of probably four or five now relocating to UK now, saying you have an accommodation or two bedroom house or whatever it is. In the next two or three months, who knows whether your gas bill can even move to probably like um, three to four thousand pounds a year. Because of this Russia Ukraine war, then you're wondering uh, this thing is almost free. Even if you spend this uh, use Nepal and whatever in Nigeria or PCA, nobody's going to bother you. But yeah, you just debit your account and they don't care. You've got to pay for the bills. So don't have an escape mentality. Okay? So, and he spent it all and he arose a matter family in the land and he began to be in want because he lacks what I call income management. There is nothing wrong, let me tell you, there is nothing wrong buying sales. All right? It's level, everybody with its level. Prime Mark is not a sin. Are you with me? <laughs> and there's nothing wrong by sales. Even if your level is to go to charity shops, excuse me. Nobody is paying you for it. If they want to give you Max and Spencer or any brand free of charge, collect it. But if it is your money, you better stay at your level. So that you don't show up and shut down later. Actually, after you spend a lot of money, spend sometimes you can buy a jacket of hundred pounds in Max and Spencer. I buy twenty five pounds in there. No, I advise you don't buy prime, don't buy primary jacket anyway, because it might not last long. You know, and buy <laughs> and buy twenty five pounds uh, primer. When you get to some places, nobody even know the difference between the brands. Black is black. Just buy general color and don't do levels. And to wear clothes that doesn't have badges. 
Are you with me? Winter is coming. Jacket will cover everything. <laughs> I'm telling you, you need to have a Jewish anointing. The only way you get it, you can get something cheap. I have the anointing. May God release it upon you in Jesus' name. Jewish anointing doesn't make you to buy anything at the, ori at the original price. I'm just trying to advise you, and I'm just I'm just being sincere with you, so that you won't do it. Because now you and now cameras are nice. Somebody will just buy something in Primark now, even if it's a charity charity shop, we use good camera to to take picture of a used clothes, and everything will look bad good on social media. And then you will see it in Nigeria. You'll be having that they go by somebody that's struggling to resist. You better you better calm down with your life. <laughs> calm down with your life and manage your income. All right. Mm. In Jesus' name, <laughs> what is enough for the wise? Verse 15, Luke 15, 15. And he went and joined himself to the cities of that land, and they sent him to the field, you know, to feed vine. One of the things about finances is that you have to be very careful of cultural shock, cultural shock, trying to want to belong. Hmm? That belongs, study. If I love it, yeah, don't show up and show down later. It's very, it's a big issue. People now will buy brands, they won't remove the badge. Then they go to parts, go and shoot levels, do levels. Then you come back. Huh? <laughs> Somebody some years ago went to go and buy Jaguar just to show level because you drive Jaguar, you're big. It's a British car, Jaguar, Range Rover, Mercedes, Benz, BMW, levels. You know, just buy that Jaguar. But he didn't know that when you buy Jaguar, it's better to buy newer ones. When you buy the older one, it will not be, it will not be drinking this. You'll be swallowing it. Even the cost of even buying this one, the guy was sweating. <laughs> Just because you just want to show up big and show down later. <laughs> you gotta be careful. <laughs> Manage your finances, I plead with you. If you are just relocating, I want to tell you, I want to advise you, no matter the number of pounds you brought in, don't be in a hurry to waste it. You can't be spending money when you've not gotten a job. Get a baby and very go and do share apartment. Eh? Three of you or four of you, you better go and get one bedroom flat and just stay there. And first of all, watch the environment and stabilize. When it comes to increasing, then you can increase your life. Don't say, oh, I don't drive any other car. It's best I'll be driving a jet. Excuse me, insurance will just weigh you down. And they will still collect your money. And if you don't pay for it, you use credit card, they destroy your credit rating. You will just crash yourself. Don't do levels. They don't do levels. In, 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 I have a pastor's friend. I don't know if I tell you, told you this last week. When he got to UK, as a pastor, it was marketing secret. That was not how Alta was right. Today is the director of a multinational company. You will grow. That's what we say. I, myself standing before you, this is not how I started. You will grow. Things will get better. But don't impress anybody. Number one, remember your children. One of the trends now that is happening in the diaspora now, actually is, is rapid in UK. Is that parents have that make their credit score. Oh, you need to understand what that means. That made their credit score. As, as the children are growing up and they are just teenagers. As they will have an opportunity to enter into the financial world, the children are using the credit score of their children, and the parents are using the credit score of their children to survive and breaking it again. Huh? Are you, you're killing the next generation. Wait for now, that if you have a stable job, you should just open an account. It is just £10, £20 every month. You can just set up a direct debit into those you know, accounts for your children. Hallelujah. And there's no need. When, when, when you have a child who's true, who's true for instance, we got some children. Uh, my some of the, to my, my my kids now. Some of them, you know, their 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 shoe size changes quite like probably every four, four months or every six, six months. You buy a shoe for them or a trainer for them. After four six months, they're already complaining. Is it that case whereby we now be spending hundred pounds on trainers for them? You better go and get a cheap one so that when their legs are stable, you can now buy higher brand. Excuse me, what are you impressing? Are you impressing? It not be, it, anyway, it is worth. Right. Yes, things will get better. Things will get better. So he got to the strange land, and the next thing that happens is that he has to join himself to the cities of that country, and he begins to do become a commoner because there was a cultural shock. Study them before you join them. No culture is the best. Don't think is the culture is uh, better uh, where where you are now more than this thing. This, listen to me. Let me tell you something. I found out with the British. There's one thing about the British. British can smite you from here to eternity. They will still go behind you to say nonsense. If a blast doesn't like you, you will see it on his face right now. That I'm not for it. I'm not for you at all. But if British say, hey, how are you doing? It's good to see you. They will still go behind you and talk. Then you will not get to a diaspora in the environment. You, you thought they like you? You better come to your senses and just keep official, official, spiritual, spiritual, personal, personal. 
You won't wake up every morning and be sharing the totality of your life and what you were, where you're coming from with somebody that just wanted to talk so that they can have something to use to talk against you in the back, at the back. Oh, don't be in a hurry to say, I'm drawing myself. Like those of you, I don't want to do, like, I don't want to do blasts. Where am I? I don't want to live around blasts. Really? You? <laughs> you? <laughs> I don't know where we got those mentality from. You stay where God has asked you to stay. If God says this is the location, stay there. Stop using people there. Obedience first. Obedience first. Because the day you need them, even the people of your culture will help you faster than even a string person. Hallelujah. This is the final word, which is very heavy. This is very verse 16. Verse 16. I want to please listen to Luke chapter 15, verse 16. This is the heavy word. Heavy word. And he will not refrain. He, he, will, he will have. He will, um, sorry. And he will refrain have filled his belly with your ox that the wine did hate. In other words, his potential went down. Is feeding capacity because he has wasted opportunities. And I'm praying that if you wasted opportunity, God will give you a chance to recover in Jesus' name. But look at what the Bible says now. When he was feeding himself with the food of the swine, of the peace, the Bible says, and no man gave to him. Mark that word. And I want everybody to type it. No man gave to him. He came in into the diaspora heavily loaded. He wasted it. His level became low. It became the normal. You know, cultural shock. He just joined them. Whatever is appealing. He's not having result for his potential. The next thing that happens is that no man gave to him. One of the ways to prove that your whole financial altar is dry is when people are not giving to you. Favor is the necessity in the school of finance. On the altar of finance. Favor is the necessity. When people are not giving to you, <laughs> your altar financially is dry. It's dry. No one gave to no one. That means, the question is that every resource he brought into the land, he wasted it. So it wasn't a seed. He didn't plant it. He didn't sow. He came in. You know, he he he, he, he despised the importance of tithe. He despised us our offering. He, he won't want to help somebody. Then you got more money and God has blessed you. You, you despise your parents in Africa and the people that you know have genuineness. You, you won't sow. There is no altar that is interceding for you. There is no altar of favor on your head. Your head, the oil on your head is drying and you did not know until you get to a box and you are in a need and no one, uh, not, no, as in, uh, uh, come on now, uh, come on, come on. No one gave. I want to appraise your life. If you have gotten to that point whereby you need and not God is not raising people, no matter the level to give to you, the favor is a necessity for finance. In the, in the school of finance, in the school, you have to trust God for it. If everything you have is what you work for, then where is the favor in your life? Some people, things just have to come in. Hallelujah. You know why? Because in this environment, people rely on government more than God. People rely more on government more than they rely on God. And there is tendency for you to enter into that experience too, whereby you just believe so much in the environment, believes in good growth, believe in amenities, you believe in everything the government can do, but you will not believe on God, believe in God for your finances. You've got to retain your vision. Have it take. In fact, one of the words that God gave to me today for somebody, and I am receiving this personally as a person, is that God will give you grace to ask him for big things. Are you with me? Ask God for big things, even in diaspora. Yes, you say, I would, oh, explain that, Pastor. I will tell you. If you were like 2,000 pounds a month net, or 2,500 pounds a month net, after working 40, 50, 40, 50 hours, depending on the industry, or on, you know, on a weekly basis, I want you to rise up this season and say, in this environment, Lord, take me to a realm whereby I can have 100,000 pounds at a go, a single transaction in the back account. That's what I'm saying. Ask God for a big favor, a big blessed financial. What that does is that it opens your heart and gives you capacity to receive more. Are you with me? To receive more, to receive more. To receive more, we need to get beyond all this 90p, under this thing that, that is a top up on, in, on, on on national income every time. And, and somebody is saying, praise God. Yeah, thank God for government. But you need to trust God for favor. I am saying to somebody, understand my voice. I'm looking forward to a season, even as a pastor, that God will be sending epas partners across the world. 100,000 pounds at the go. Boom. 
Oh, you know how much that one will do for a ministry and shake medway? We need it. We need it. You need to trust God to up your game financially. This is not where I'm going to be. I will find it easy to pay my bills. I will find it easy to give to people. I will find it easy to sow. I believe God for favor over my finances in the name of Jesus. I will not be using calculator on every month to say how much is left. I believe God that if it is a need that I have, God is going to activate the altar of favor over my finances and God is going to raise men and women to say so into the life of this man of God share out of this and as you are doing for others, God is raising people to do for you. As you are helping one, two are helping you. As you are helping two, five is helping you in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command by the power in the name of Jesus, right? The favor will rest upon your altar of finances in the name of the Lord Jesus. Some of you under the sound of my voice, every investment you want to do, you've got to take loan. You want to pay for this, you get loan. You want to pay for that, you get loan. But in the name of Jesus, right? God is going to take you to a level that we raise sponsor for you, help for you by the power in the name of Jesus, right? Interest rate, interest, don't need the honor. We know where you don't. I receive it. I receive it. More is coming to come out. More is coming in the name of Jesus. Wealth in abundance, increase in abundance in the name of the Lord Jesus. I will not be talking about small figures financially. My vision will be funded in the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness, God. Mm. Oh, Kapala Sofre Keteba Lako Shata. Eka Proko Sofre Keteba Koso Pando Sakata Labasha. I decree, come on, somebody type it. Wealth in abundance. Wealth in abundance. I'm a custodian of wealth. I have more than enough. I, oh my God. Do you know what it means? Oh my goodness. One, oh, Katapalo Sepe Keteba Kataba. I'm struggling. I don't want to share personal experiences. Financially, some of the seed we sow sometimes that bring an open never upon our life. I'm saying to somebody on that summer, but you will wake up one year, you will just you will just take like probably five hundred thousand naira, you look for like five people, you just scatter the scatter seed everywhere, help people everywhere in a bond as a scatter seed everywhere. Help. In the name of Jesus, because so that I'm telling you, you will not be broken in the diaspora. You will not be. I say you will not be broke. I decree and declare that the favor that was upon you where you're coming from will not be dry where you are. God will help you to keep his principle, to keep his order and his ordinances. And in the name of Jesus, right, you will be a giant in the industry God has put you in. In the name of Jesus, God is taking us to a realm. You will buy car cash, you will buy houses cash, you will, you, you will buy you know, properties cash in the name of the Lord Jesus, right? We say we get it to a level. We buy credit card, we build no use to us in the name of Jesus, right? We rise as a Jewish people. We rise as a people that is blessed of the Lord. We, we stand as the people that understand the power of instruction and enablement that proceed from the house of the Lord. That the spirit of multiplication is resting upon us, resting upon our ministry. Without swear, there is increase. In the name of Jesus, right? Are you listening to me? I, there, there was a time I was listening to a pastor. I guess it, I guess it's in South Africa. In South Africa. South Africa. Mention the shyness of TV. TV and all of them. You will see this man there. Simple, easy, but I just checked the ministry. They, they are less than 250 members. But if you see the way they are, where they are printed, that's when I discovered that quality falls before quantity. <laughs> Hallelujah. If five people are loyal to you, it's better than 1,000 that is dropping for five pounds. Are you with me? If God places you with just three or four people that are loyal friends, that anytime you have a need, they rise up for you. It's better than people, your, your phone contact full of people that are useless and irrelevant and not useful to you, especially when you're in need. I am saying to you that God will not only increase you in wealth, but every relationship that matters to your life, God will bless them. Remember the bless of the Lord. The covenant God gave to Abraham when he was moving out, he said, I will will bless you and I will bless them that bless you. I'm telling you, it will bless you. It will create an atmosphere upon you to receive. Oh, I decree and declare capacity to receive. Capacity to receive in the name of Jesus, right? The family, oh my God, give me five more minutes. I feel that I will drive. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be broke. I refuse to be limited financially. I decree and declare out of this meeting today, God is going to give you signs, signs to show to you that it's about to move your finances to another level. I prophesy upon you in the name of Jesus, right? Whatever pain finances has caused for you, in the name of Jesus, right? God will begin to take you to a realm of reward. Hallelujah. Realm of reward. Realm of reward. In the name of Jesus. The realms of reward. The, oh my God. You have paid your dues. It's time for reward. I said you have paid your dues. It's time for reward. In the name of the Lord Jesus, right? Are you still with me tonight? Mm. 
Katole Gebreke say, has God for big things? Has God for mighty things? Hallelujah. Has God for big things? Has God for mighty things? Has God for big gods that is beyond your expectation? And the money you have not seen before. That season is coming in which it will come to pass in your life. Ask God for thousands and millions. Hallelujah. Put it on the table. Lord Jesus, this is what I want to do. And listen to people that God has blessed in the diaspora. And stop thinking about people that are struggling. There are people that God has blessed. A medical doctor went to go and meet a pastor and he said, I'm confused about my career. And after prayers here and there, he said, God is not leading you to a medical line, going to real estate. In United Kingdom, he has 100 houses. You cannot have one or two and you are feeling as if you're a big boy or a champion. What is wrong with you? You've got to dream big. You, you can build a state in Africa. Are you with me? You can build, you can invest. You can invest. God can take you to a level whereby you have enough assets and looking for where to invest in. You hear me? It is possible. And God is going to make you an example for that in the name of Jesus. You are in a season of abundance and that will be your experience by the power of the Holy Ghost. There's nothing wrong with you. you hear me? There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. You are just in the process. I'm saying to somebody right now, everyone is quiet. Not because everyone has neglected you. Everyone is quiet. Not because everyone has neglected you. There's nothing wrong with you. The fact that if God hates you, he will not keep you. If God hates you, he will not keep you. So stop that. The fact that there's no communication from the Spirit over that subject matter is not that God has ignored you. Just calm down. Keep your obedience, your boldness, and don't compromise. It's going to shake up the tables for you. Hallelujah. I hear uh, angels will vote for you where you don't have something to say. Angels will vote for you. He will vote for you. God's going to raise representative to talk to you where, they, where you don't have a voice. Let them hate you. Let them despise you. You will see a shift that go by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. I bring the mark of favor upon every one of us. Mark of favor in the diaspora. Oh, Jesus. Mark of favor. People knocking on your door and say, how can I help you? People showing you mercy. See you by the road side. Say, I have interest in you. Hallelujah. People that, that you have not spoken with many years. Hallelujah. Somebody came, you know, when we just started this village, somebody that I've not even seen for 15 years. Just said to me, PD, I'm in United Kingdom. I want to come and meet you. Came to my house, and after we just finished talking, you know, it was a, it said, send the church account. That's the first time 1,000 pounds we entered the church account. 1,000. Oh, wow. I said, wow. This is how it happens. Then he has moved beyond 1,000 now. I'm trusting God for 100,000. The day will come a single figure. It started somewhere. But it must not end there. We're growing. Getting better. The part of the righteous. Like shining light. That shine more and more. It's going to get better for I say it will get better for you. It go better for you. God no go shame you. Let me use breaking. <laughs> it go better for you. God no go shame you. Believe him. Believe him. Because faith works. Praise God. Are you blessed today? I got to go. I spend more time tonight. But I believe you're blessed. Thank you Holy Spirit. I give you praise. Give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. I give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Faith works. Thank you, Jesus. God no go shame us. Yeah, God no go shame us. Hallelujah. We don't. We, we have left God no go shame us. We're in Elijah level now. Our sorry you feel right now. <laughs> Elijah level. Praise God. We're moving from gear six to gear nine. Yeah. Yeah. It works. Praise God. God bless you today, family. Thanks for joining again. I love it and I appreciate it when I see you guys joining again. And again, same face, same people believing in what we do here. God bless you. I don't know what will happen next week, Thursday. Definitely, it might be a season of prayers and prophetic by the mercy of God. Definitely, you will see me again by the mercy of God next week, Thursday. Uh, but I might not take this um, discussion further than this. I think the hoil for that has just uh, <laughs> went down. Praise God. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks so much for joining. Thank you so much. You need counseling. You need the air. Please find if actually some of you that knows me. Please just just call. I'm just a call away. If I didn't pick, I promise you, I don't ignore my calls. I will always call back. And if you have anybody around Medway, United Kingdom of Kent, looking for church, even online, or if you somebody needs our ministry, please feel free to connect them with this influence church. We're busy made we here. We're growing. God is helping. I'm telling God's word is rich, man. You need to go on YouTube and watch, you know, what we discussed last week Sunday. It was powerful. And I'm already getting re getting prepared for this Sunday again. You might want to join us and listen to God's word. Build a family bond this Sunday on relationship. Family life segment is going to be a blessing to you. God bless you. Love you. Honor you. Salute your destiny. You know, and I wish you a wonderful night rest. God bless you. See you next week Thursday. God bless you. Thank you, everybody. Pastor Diola, 
Pastor, Mr. S Pastor Sonny, I shall God bless you, everybody. Oh, Dr. Tony, thanks for joining. Dr. Evola, thank you, everybody. God bless you. I appreciate you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night, friends. Bye.